Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on the BBA Education at Home with Matthew Guerin. My name is Trevor Studd, and I'll be here relaying your questions and comments, if you wish, over to Matthew. So please feel free to fire away, and we hope you enjoy today's education. Over to you, Matthew. Hi, guys. My name is Matthew Guerin. I'm a barber in South Wales in the UK. I have two barber shops. Um, I teach at colleges, I teach with the BBA, and I have my own training academy. Now today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. This is going to be a more creative aspect. Um, it's probably more relevant for maybe your Instagram profile, um, potentially raising kind of more attention on yourself within the industry, um, bringing more attention on yourself. It's probably something you would use maybe if you wanted to get involved in competitions, uh, maybe photography work to really show your artistic flair. But it might not be something you would see on a day-to-day -day basis in your barbershop. That doesn't mean that this won't be relevant because while you're practicing something maybe more creative um, or testing yourself and really kind of pushing your boundaries and thinking outside of the box, you're still raising your skill set and your development as a barber. Um, you will also be able to target a clientele that you potentially wouldn't have normally been able to target if you do have creative flair and if you do potentially um, offer something different as a part of your services. So today, this is my daughter, Leona. Um, fortunately, during this lockdown, um, we've been able to undercut her hair, which allows me to try something different out. Um, I've been using it then for my college workshops online. So it's been a great help to me. I don't know what the schools are going to say when we go back, but um, at the minute, we don't care. We've undercut her hair already. Um, this is going to save us time throughout this process. So I've already clipped it up, firstly using a bauble, and I've pinned all the sections up to make sure it's tight and clean around the canvas that we are going to be working on. Now, although it's really important to have nice flowing creative lines to have clean lines to be able to um, apply something creative to suit the client and the hair type the probably most important part isn't the outcome of the designs but it's potentially the sections or the shape you're working towards so with the owner being feminine a female we've not taken the disconnection too high so she is still able to wear the hair down and look natural in day-to-day, day-to-day use. But then we can also then pin it up and show off maybe her more creative personality. So I've got to be conscious that I'm pinning up the right areas so that once this is down, it is going to protect her outlines and it's going to still suit her facial features rather than potentially disconnecting it right up to the reception line just because that's where you normally disconnect certain hairstyles. I've been conscious to keep it lower towards the temples but it still protects her look and once the hair is done, it's important to be conscious of shapes, um, sections you're disconnecting and making sure that you're leaving hair in the right places that it's still going to suit your client's features. Now, we don't want to make you want to look too masculine. Obviously, shaving a lady's hair is already going to masculinize them. So we're going to maintain a nice outline and depth towards the base of the hair so she still has a nice feature. It's going to be compl complementing her features. We're not going to be fading this up and removing that hair, creating a masculine look. We're going to be keeping length on the outlines and we're going to be working, creating fading and patterns throughout the hair. So I've got her set up on a side profile for now as I'm going to be starting on the side and I will be doing a reverse fade into the baseline. Bringing that back, I've not actually got kind of an idea in my head or um, an exact outcome that I'm working towards. I know that I'm starting on the side and I know that I'm creating a reverse fade because I want to maintain a feminine outline. But as I'm working back, I'm going to see what the hair provides me rather than just putting basic lines in throughout and hoping that it just looks okay. I'm going to see what comes alive as I'm doing it. I'm not going to uniform shave it all off to one length. I'm going to work with the length that's there. Now, if a client comes in and they want potentially an undercut or a disconnection and the hair is fully grown out, then clearly we do have to remove the bulk to clean the canvas down, ready for potentially any creative work or whether it's just a disconnection. But because this has already been undercut and it's probably up to say the length of an eight guard, 
I'm not going to go over this now with, with potentially a two or a three. I'm going to work with the lens that, that's there. So I've got clearer outlines, and then I'm going to fade and taper it down into different zones to really make that pattern come to life. Now, it's really good to practice these things. Whether you think you want to offer it or not, it's good to maybe practice it in your own spare time, develop your skill set, to, to develop your artistic vision. Because once you master doing something like this, you see things differently, you get a different perspective on things. And then when clients do come in and they want something different, you can be confident in delivering that. So in my area, it's only a small town, there's a lot of barbers there. But I know for a fact that if someone goes into a different barber shop and they want something different, or they want patterns, or they want a design, or potentially something creative, um, and you tend to get a lot of female customers come in who want undercuts and disconnection, they want to kind of add more creativity to their hairstyle, they will then refer them to come to me, which is nice to know. But at the same time, they are losing business and they are losing credibility because those clients, they will always see me as being more experienced or potentially better than them. So sometimes it's nice to try something different. It's nice to step out of your comfort zone to apply new techniques and skills to develop yourself. Because if other people are learning these and they are moving forward because they are on the Instagram bandwagon or they do want to enter competitions and really kind of raise their profile and they are trying these new things out and then your typical town bar will just likes his comfort zone and wants to stay the same because they know it works then you're going to get left behind so I'm not saying this creative workshop you're going to see today is going to be you know a five six haircut kind of a day opportunity it's not going to happen you might get an opportunity like this maybe once a month but that opportunity then sets you above potentially the competition it makes you stand out because this sort of cut is a standout haircut. So going back to the actual techniques and processes. So I've, this is already disconnected. I've already raised the hair away from the canvas. If it was fully grown out, I'd advise potentially to remove the bulk first with a four or a six. Um, but this is already short enough. I'm going to start working from my disconnected profile down. And I'm going to start reverse fading the hair from shorter to longer towards the baseline. And the techniques you would apply would be the same method as, as, as fading in a beard. You know, we're working from a shorter profile then longer towards the base. What you have to be conscious of though is the shape you're leaving behind. And what's important is it's not what you're taking away, it's what you're leaving behind. And that's what's creative and that's what creates the, the full effect and outcome of that finished product. So don't always be conscious of, I need to take this off, I need to cut that shorter. Sometimes think, where do I need to leave some hair? What do I need to work towards? And think a step ahead rather than just what you're actually working on. So as I'm working around, I want to see what the hair provides me. I'm going to build um, hopefully something nice and artistic, not too complicated, but effective around what comes to life on the head. <clears throat> so starting from the side profile, I'm going to remove hair from above the temple that's dropped out of the section because I don't want to cut the fringe outline too short. I want to maintain a natural hair profile for my daughter. I'm going to remove that section away. I'm just going to work within the depth of the side of the head. I'm starting with an Andis slimline pro. Cordless, <clears throat> I find that the type of blade on this cuts thick hair cleanly and removes bulk fast. So if you keep still with me, please, Yona. Keep your head square so it can be seen. I'm not starting on the outer profile. I want to make sure that that is kept. The depth and the colour protects the facial features. I'm going to start working within the hairline. Okay, now that looks quite harsh to start. And some people who are not confident with doing something more creative might start panicking at this point, but you've got to trust the process and trust the methods. And trust yourself. You are professionals. Back yourself. Try something different. You know how the tools work. Don't be scared to try them out. I'm only working down about 10 mil into the body of the hair. You don't want to be shaving your trimmer all the way down to the baseline because then you've got nothing to play with. 
<clears throat> what makes creative hair stand out is different contrast in colour. If it's just really short and really long on the outline, then you've just got basic outlines. But if you can get a graduation from shorter to longer, you can make patterns come to life and look more 3D and really soften them to make them look more attractive. So I've decided to move in the hair now towards the disconnection. I'm now going to work a curved line to frame this section and separate it from the rest. So I'm going to lead to the corner of my trimmer first, angling the blade out into a tapered diagonal position, and then I'm going to carve that around back up to the disconnected line. And you watch now how this will start to come together. <clears throat> So I've started with the blade facing me. As I'm curving around the opposite way, I'm going to turn the blade to face my client's face. Now, so the section this reverse fade will be in will be kept within that zone. This outline now frames that off and say it the rest to do something different with, okay? So now I'm gonna be conscious of the shape we've got on the outline. I'm just gonna sharpen that up. But without taking it too high. We wanna create some length and flow for the rest of the base of the hair. Matthew, what clippers are you using again? These are the Andes Slimline Pros. Um, I've tried loads of different kind of detailers and trimmers out over the years, and I tend to find that this cuts thicker hair probably the cleanest out of all the tools I've used. <clears throat> it's easy to hold, it's nice and comfortable. The blade isn't too sharp, um, very unlikely then to potentially cut or graze your client, and it just cuts through thick hair so comfortably. Let's side slightly for me. So I'm just staying within the natural flow of the hairline. I don't want to take it into the body of the hair. I'm staying as close as I can to the outline to allow a natural regrowth. I'm going to do it quickly. I'm just going to pin that out of the section that's dropped. So it keeps getting in my way. Now I put the trimmer down, I got the outline that I want throughout the base of the hair. I started removing the shortest point of the reverse fade with the trimmer. Now I can start building up the grades, slowly working into that shortest point to start allowing the reverse fade then to flow into the darker baseline. So as you would do um, a fade on a beard, working from shorter to longer, it would be exactly the same process on the hair. Just being conscious you allow in enough depth throughout the base. So I'm going to be going in with um, a zero close to start. I'm just going to start working down from that shortest point. Only working about five to ten mil at a time. You don't be taking too much off. Less is more in this instance. I need to be conscious to allow enough hair to stay on the outline to maintain colour to suit her features. So I'm going to be working it shorter into the body of the hair, not shorter towards the front of the hairline. I'm just trying to create a graduation in length from shorter, working longer down the head, working from my trimmer grade into my zero. And I'm only working between about five mil, I'd say, from the trimmer section. So now I'm going to open my lever up to a 0.5. And I'm going to take that down a little bit further. Just to start softening that fader, we can work into the bigger guards. 
which allow a darker finish in the hair, in the fade. So I'm going to work this fade around the shape of the ear and then work into the outline of the section that I've separated. And I'm really being conscious of what I'm leaving behind rather than what I'm taking off. I'm working the corner mainly rather than the full face of the blade, as if I'm only cutting in that zone, I'm cutting a smaller surface area, there's less chance I'm going to take too much off, and I've got more control of what I'm cutting. So just close it back down to a zero, just to polish that 0.5 back up into the trimmer zone, taking out any little lines or dark patches that I might have left behind. So I'm just polishing up as I'm going. Now I start working through my grades. So rather than putting a 0.5 middle guard on first, I'm going to put the one on to start removing more body from the rest of the hair that's left. But I still want to keep that full length on the outline. So I'm not going to start shaving from underneath the outline. I'm going to still work from the shorter section down, but I'm in control of what I'm taking off. Still using the corner, so I'm not removing too much hair. I'm in full control. Angled, so it's naturally cut in a taper from shorter to longer throughout the hair. I'm now opening the lever as I'm working towards the hairline, towards her face, as I don't want to take off too much hair, but I do want to taper down some longer bits as I'm going around. Again, using the angle, and I'm taping it in with a blade angle from shorter to longer. So where I want it to be longer towards the face, the blade is angled away. And where I want it cut, I'm maintaining the corner then towards the head. And I'm just working into the body of the hair with the corner, and it's like point cut in a way. You're not removing all the length, you're taking out the weight, and you're not creating new lines then. You're just trying to create a color contrast flowing from lighter to darker. Little gentle strokes, little nibbles with the corner of the blade, rather than being too harsh or too heavy, just working it in a little bit at a time. I'm just going to clean any hair away that I've just cut now, and a little talc on the brush, which helps neutralize any moisture or oil on the skin, making it easier to remove any excess hair that's been cut. We can start to see now that first section coming together. We're working from shorter to longer. If I was to release the disconnected section, you still see an outline if say, the hair was pulled back. It's not looking too short and too harsh, but if it was pinned up, you can start to see some creative, creative artistic flair coming through the client's personality. Right. You should have the straight with me. Thank you. I know it must be hard. I'm sorry. <laughs> Matthew, when you're doing patterns in, in the shop, how much longer? Do you, do you allow for your clients when doing this? And, and do you charge much more as well? Yeah, it's, just, it's important to have clear communication. What you tend to find is if clients, well, usually the children in or teenagers in um, for a haircut, they'll book them in potentially for a fade. And while they're there, they'll say, oh, by the way, could we have this? And you do need more time. Um, it all depends how creative it is, really. If they just want potentially... Um, like a surgical line shaved into the fade, then you can do that with a normal fade booking. Um, I don't charge any extra if it's just one tram line because I enjoy doing it. But if the client says, oh, I'd like my son to have patterns or I fancy having the side of my head shaved with patterns put in, um, then I would book them in with an extra half hour to give me that time to really work on it. I don't want to be rushing it or doing it half-heartedly. I, I really enjoy this. So I would book an extra half hour and I would charge for my half hour slot. To say I normally charge 15 to 20 pound on a half hour slot, depending on what I'm offering, 
Um, if I'm having to book them in for the hour, I will charge them then 30 to 40 pounds then for the hour. And I make them aware of that at the start. If they still want it, then they know what they're paying for it. But if they booked in for a fade, and then they ask then, oh, actually, can I reverse fade this side and the fade partners that side? Then you've just got to be brave enough to say to them, oh, sorry, you've not booked that appointment. I will give you the fade today that you booked. And then in the next couple of weeks, if you still want something creative, I will book you in for the correct appointment to suit what you need and your requirements. But yeah, I would charge for the time that I take on producing this haircut. Okay, come back on to me. Right then, so I'm going to start to work towards the nape of the hair now, sharpening up the edges as I feel I need to. And then I'm going to start reverse fading out from this section that we've put in to separate the side from the back, working into the rest of the hair. And I can see myself maybe working some patterns in towards the other side. So same again, I'm going to start on the line of the blade and I'm just going to work out. Shorter, work into longer around the outline. Do you do a lot of these creative, sorry, Matthew, do you do a lot of these creative fades in your shop, you and your staff? Um, not as much as I would like. We do a lot of patterns, you know, your lines potentially, like your sharp zigzaggy lines, you know, your scratches into the fade. We do a lot of that sort of thing, the more basic patterns. Uh, we don't do as much of the creative stuff. So um, I do have a lot of female clients that come in. They seem to be a lot braver than the males. So they will have maybe something more creative, something in the fade, or they'll have one side is connected with patterns in it. And I'd probably say I do two or three of them a month, maybe. There was a phase about a year or two ago that I was doing four or five kind of detailed designs a day on like um, teenagers or older children, kind of from the age of nine up, who would want all sorts of things from your Superman sign to Pokemon designs and you name it, I've done it. And I really enjoy it. Now, it's not practical and it won't last forever. These sort of cuts grow out in sort of two weeks. And sometimes clients don't feel like they want to pay 40 pounds something. It's only going to last two weeks. But then ladies will pay 30, 40 pounds for the nails done every week, you know? So if you want something different, why not pay for it? The person's going to take time applying those skills. They've got that artistic flair and you're paying for the brand really for, the, for that work. So it comes and goes in phases. But if usually children want it enough, the parents will pay for it. Um, but I'd say I'd probably do one or two of these a month rather than, you know, one or two a day, um, which I'd like to be doing. But, you know, you've got to take what comes. He said that to me, stand up more, lean on the side of the chair. I haven't got a bad chair in the house, unfortunately, so we're leaning over a kitchen chair. Um, but needs must. Now, I like to do these probably more for Instagram and for competitions. I will practice these if I know I'm entering a competition or if I want to maybe put something a bit different up on, on Instagram. But generally, client-wise, it's the more basic lines, scratches, zigzags, um, the odd sort of Batman, Superman sign down again on children. Um, but I do get a lot of ladies that have creative stuff. The difference is I'm the only one in my area that can do it. So they've got to come to me. And that's why it's important sometimes to learn something different and to test yourself really kind of push, push yourself out of your comfort zone. Don't be scared to try something new. Don't be scared to try this. You know, make risk your friend. It's important that you embrace risk because there's, there's two outcomes of risk, and that's success or experience. But the, it's never negative. Even if you feel like you've made a mistake, you've learned how not to do something, but if you're too scared to try, you're only going to stand still and go backwards. If, you, if you're going to fail to learn, that's where the negativity comes in is not being brave enough to try something different and to push your boundaries and push yourself out of your comfort zone because that will only create development and eventually you will reach success. But being too scared to try something like this, you're only going to end up staying as you are and then people will pass you, which will result in you going backwards. But don't be scared to have a go. Embrace it. So I started removing now only about five to 10 mil with a trimmer. Again, I'm going to be going back in with my clipper, head down a little bit for me, please. Back with my clipper, leave, leave it closed. And I'm just going to start now to work around what I just cut with the trimmer into the body of the hair.
So now I'm leaning the blade out with the shortest point towards the trimmer line, and then the, the longest point there where I want to maintain length of the hair is angled away from the head. So in the corner, just to mix the shorter and longer colours together, which is where you build your fade. Okay. So it's starting to look quite harsh as it is, but trust the process. Don't look at the current situation, visualize the outcome. As I start working through this with guards, it's gonna fade nicely into the darkness of the hair and create a faded contrast. So again, that's the zero into the trimmer. I'm gonna go back with the one at this stage now, we're working with a lot more hair, but I don't want to kind of tweak shorter levels at a time. I'm gonna work bigger levels, and if I need to, then I'll fade lines out. This is still closed, head down a little bit for me. Again, I'm being conscious of what I'm leaving behind. I wanna keep that outline there. So I'm gonna work the weight the way throughout the middle, but maintain darkness in the outline to give me that sharper edge when I shake it off. Again, still using that angle technique, leading with the corner of the blade, maintaining a tapered profile with the blade coming away from the head to make sure we're not taking off too much hair at one time. Matthew, to what extent do you plan the design and pattern as you're going along? And how much do you, you know, let it go, just, just go with the flow? If I'm doing competitions or something for Instagram, it's kind of all on the spot. Um, I might come up with an idea on the side to reverse fade it first, because I do like that kind of depth in the outline. And then as I'm working around, I just really work with what comes alive. But obviously, if you've got a client in the chair, then you've got to work to their requirements. So if they've asked for something specific, then it's important then to stay within those guidelines. So if you're doing it for a client, be clear on what they want. Maybe try and draw something out first, ask the pictures, images, have an idea of what they need and what they'd like, and then work within that with maybe some advice on areas you can tweak it because you can see how it might look effective. Um, but as I'm kind of doing something different potentially for Instagram or for competitions, I just go with it. You know, I will build a profile of what I want to work towards if I've got a competition, because I don't want to completely wing it. But nine times out of 10, while I'm there on that spot, on that stage, and I'm cutting, I'll see something different. I'll just go with it. I'll just trust it. I'll, I'll just trust the, the, the method. Um, but yeah, it's time and a place. If a client wants it, you've got to be strict within the guidelines. If you want to just try something different, just, just, let, just, just run free, just flow with it and see what comes to light. Again, so leading back in with the one guard. It's closed currently. I'm really working that corner in towards the shorter part of the fade that was created with the zero. Now I can see a clear contrast in color now between the shorter hair and the bit that I'm removing. So I will need to go back in either with a 0.5 guard or an open zero just to polish that out. But I'm building the profile at the minute. So I want to make sure I've got that shape in place because it's a shape that matters. And then I can work that fade within that shape. I don't just want to start working through the fade, through the fade, and then before I know it, I've come this far on the head. I've set my guidelines, and I'm working within the zones that I've set. Okay, so I'm going to put my point five guard on first. Just make a softer finish and an open zero. I'm just going to polish the slight line that I have out between the zero and the one. Again, it was in the corner, so you're breaking it up, just like you'd be point cutting on the top. I'm just working through that fade. If you need to, just open the lever. If you're worried you're taking too much hair off, open that lever, which doesn't cut as short, and keep working that round. And if you need to then get shorter, you can always close the lever back up. Okay, so again, we're starting to see the contrast in colour now working from shorter to darker to longer. Now, this is a lot darker than it. You've still got the full um, shape of the bulk that we haven't removed. 
So now I can go back in maybe with a 1.5 middle guard or a two, just start taping it down. I can clip rubber foam it or stitch rubber foam it, whatever you're comfortable with. But I've now started creating my reverse fade sections, and I'm going to work with the shapes I have left to create some patterns working around the head. So do you want to, if you can just turn or just take a little bit and I'll turn you. Right, hold it down for me. Put it in the way you're nice. Sit down. Great. Now I'm going to set my baseline first because I want to work within that shape. I don't want someone to start working down and see what I've got left. I'm going to put in what I want to keep and then work within that so I've got guidelines. Sit down slightly quickly. So as you want to create curved shapes, it's important to leave with the, with the corner, tape them into position, and if you want to cut clean square shapes, then it's more effective to go in with a flat face and work done. Just hold us down again, please. Move down a little bit. Get down more. Yeah. Right. Now I'm going to curve in at the middle, so it was in the corner of the blade. Working into the body of the hair. Switch up now to a back leg somewhere because I've been using back feet for some reason. Just quickly put this on charge, guys, two seconds. I can't charge it for another one, but I don't know what that is. Okay, head back down for me. Clean the canvas. So with all excess hair, so you can see what you're working towards. What you've cut and what's been left behind. Okay, I'm just going to trim over cold mass, take away some awkward hair. Matthew, do you feel the competition work and the extra training you've put in for things like patterning and, and training for competitions have made you more confident and successful barber? Yeah, absolutely. To be honest with you, I was doing patterns before I was cutting hair. When I first picked up a tool, I was putting patterns in my own head and trying things out. Just because I've always been slightly artistic in school and I enjoyed that. And when I entered my first couple of competitions, I didn't really do anything too creative. So I wanted to play it safe. I wasn't really winning anything. So when I brought kind of my love of artistic flair into my love of barbering and kind of put them together and entered competitions and learned from other barbers and seeing what they could create and kind of, it's really like one of my first um, big competitions, um, I was up against Paul Mack, which is a massive name in the industry. Um, and I, I came away from there learning so much from him and inspired me to try new things out and to do more. Uh, and, and then trying those things, I was I got back to the shop on my staff or my friends um, on dolls' heads on, on paper, um, and then going back and trying what I learned and practice out in comps, and eventually starting to get more success, more success inspired me more, gave me more confidence. And throughout the process, I was learning so much. So I thought I was at a certain level that I was ready to compete, but only when I started competing and seeing other people's results and outcomes and learned the process of competitions. That's when I was able to then add to my skill set and learn so much more, which made me better as a barber. And at the time, I didn't realize I'd learned from that process. But now looking back, I can see how much I did learn. And if I hadn't done competitions and really pushed myself out of my comfort zone and tried something different, when I, when I was on stage, I had everything to lose. When it all comes together, it's so rewarding. Um, and now looking back, yeah, I've learned so much from it. Would you want that, please? Right, 
So I'm bringing the comb into play. If there's part of the hair, especially towards the nape, that might want to grow in different directions, I'm bringing the head down into the position that I want to cut with the comb and then cut it off cleanly, allowing them to sit back in the shape and then just tidy in that outline up. Now I know what I'm working with. I don't want to cut this shape out. I've cut it into the shape of the hair it wants to grow naturally, which will allow it to grow out better, but still looks creative and sharp. And I'm going to work for the rest of the hair now. I know my guideline. I know what I'm working towards. I'm going to start to build something creative with what I've got left behind. So I'm going to start from this side. I'm not going to start from the outside of the hairline working in. I'm going to leave my hairline throughout and only work within it. I'm going to start by putting a swirl in. Again, in the corner of the blade, to start cutting that into the hair. And I'm actually going to see what comes together. I've got no plan other than I want to protect my outline and work within that zone. Matthew, have you always done barbering or have you, did you do hairdressing as well? Uh, I did a little bit of hairdressing, but I was not qualified in hairdressing at all. Um, the first shop that I, that I went to work in to do barbering, it was at the hairdressers. So I did a little bit with them and learned from them. But in general, um, it's mainly barbering my background is. Um, when I went to college, I qualified. It was, it was only in barbering I got qualified, not in hairdressing. Um, and I started off by, by learning myself, self-teaching, um, trying out new things on my friends, on myself, on my family. Just because I loved it, I enjoyed it. Um, and then when I realized this is what I wanted to do, I went back to college and to get qualified in barbering. I do the ladies' hair. Um, I've got a lot of hairdresser friends. that's taught me a lot. So I'm not scared to try out different things on ladies and cut ladies type of hair. Um, but I'm not qualified in it, if that makes sense. Okay, so I just started from the middle, working out again, it was in the corner, but cutting against the direction of the hair, not towards it, like across it. Worked round, brought it into a point towards the hairline here. I don't want to cut into the zone too much. I'm going to keep that darker. So I brought it to a stop here. Now I'm working back into the head. I'm going to flow with it, see what comes together. I'm keeping plenty of shape between the outlines, not keeping them too close together, which allows them to look more bold and clearer to see. But it gives me room that if I want to fade into them or to take them or to do something different with them, I've got room to play with. Then leading in with the corner of the trimmer, it allows me to cut the hair cleanly without taking too much hair off. So where I've maintained length towards the nape, I'm working towards that point, and I'm going to work back into the body that's left behind. Keeping the customer comfortable by cleaning them down. Keeping the canvas clear to see what you're working with. Okay, that's my job for me. I'm just going to do that. Mm -hmm. 
So, Matthew, you're based in Wales. How has uh, lockdown been for you? How have you found it? Yeah, really frustrating. I'm not going to lie. Um, going from working 10 to 14 hours a day to looking at potentially other job opportunities um, because the shops are closed. It's, it's a shock to the system. Um, but it's helped to be able to still do interaction online. Um, I still do my college courses online. I'm obviously working with yourself online. But it's keeping me within the industry. It's keeping me motivated and inspired. But it is a shock to the system to not be stuck in a barber shop, to be working with my team, you know, seeing my regular customers now become friends. I've been up in the hair for such a long time. Um, so it's, it's a tough time, but you've got to do what you're going to do to maintain your safety, your family's safety. Um, so sometimes it's worth just being patient and seeing this out and trusting our government and hoping that things be back to normal soon enough. Okay, so I'm just working now, different shapes together, into position, seeing what comes alive and seeing what's left behind that I can potentially work into to create something more artistic. Let's just clean this canvas down again. Might be looking quite basic at the minute, but in the next few minutes, if I start getting braver and start moving more hair, you start to see this come alive. Use it up there. I don't move this thing, please. Okay, so I see that come together. All we're cutting so far is done with the corner. I'm not going to remove the flat blade to remove any excess bulk. I'm just in control of the shape I'm bringing together. I'm just looking at it. So as I'm working on, I'm seeing what maybe um, is standing out to me. Area that might look too dark, and I might need to bring something into it. Maybe attach it to one of the curves, or bring it into the fade. I'm building it as I'm going. Before I start adding any more lines, I'm going to start tapering these dark sections down. Where there's excess buck, I'm going to put a 1.5 guard on. Back up for me, please. And where I've started working the fade now through the sides into the patterns, I'm going to start softening that dark zone there and working into the pattern to see how it looks now once the darker layers of hair are removed. To see if I can inspire to add or to build on something. So I'm moving ahead for me, babe. I'm opening the lever, so I'm going to work into the pattern now. But I don't want to take too much off, but I want to make sure I'm tapering it down. And that's just clean and clear and shapely. So again, I can see now there's a lot of bulk here. I really want to start fading that in towards the hairline. Bring it round into the pattern. So I'm going to lead in with a corner of my guard. So I'm tapering that excess weight down to watch it reveal the detail in the pattern. Sometimes it's not all about just keeping it one length and just cutting lines into it. It's about building shapes, building graduations from shorter to longer making the pattern really come to life.
We've got the contrasting colour working throughout the sides, and we've just got kind of a square, bulky outline with the patterns we've set in. And I want to start working areas of fades into those patterns, working from some of the lines out towards the depth of the hair, creating fades, to really see this come alive. When we're back into the trim now, I'm going to build in from these sections. We start creating a fade into the pattern from the top, just like we did uh, on the other side. I'm going to start just below the disconnection and work the hair down slightly. Not taking too much off, less is more. Because I've got a point coming into the pattern, I'm going to bring a fade into a point to make them stand out. Onto the zero. Now we're done with the trimmer. Again, we're just going to start extending the shorter area down towards the patterns, leading mainly with the corner. So we're not taking off too much hair. I'm in more control of why I'm cutting. When I'm conscious of the shape I want to build and that I want to work towards. I'm just being patient and just working into that area to make sure the hair is cleanly faded. I don't want to be too rough. Just tweaking it slightly bit at a time. Now we're going to open the lever and start getting a bit braver, working closer to the outline of the pattern. Still creating that tapered angle on the blade. So where I want to maintain length, the blade is shaped away from the head. So if that's the head, and I'm cutting with the blade. The top end is shaped away from the head where I want to maintain length. One guard into play. Again, I'm not going to shave from below the guideline into it. I'm going to start above it and work into the shorter zone so the outline is maintained at maximum length. So just as we found on this side, where I'm taking the bulk away with a one, I'm using the one because the blade is longer, it's easier to create a blend towards that outline. I know I can still see a clear contrast in colour from the zero on the one, so I'm just going to work back in now with a 0.5 guard, connecting those two levels of hair together, leading with the corner, so I'm not taking too much off, and I'm just pointing the longer and shorter sections of hair into each other. But guys, it's important to test this out. Try things out. You, you might be surprised. You might find that you're good at something you didn't realise you were good at. You know, it's important to See what your tools do and what you can do with them. It'll give you more inspiration. It'll give you more flair for your, for your profession. And when you do go back to your barber shops after this time off, you'll be more excited to try something new out. Okay, so I'm going to start working a fade now throughout this line into the swirl of the pattern. So I'm just going to win with a 0.5 guard just to soften the depth of the hair and not go too short because the area isn't as big. I want to be careful. I'm not taking too much off at the start. I'm just going to work throughout the edge of that line, softening it up towards the outline of the pattern. So 
Same here from that outline. Just like we put the trimmer line in at the top and work down, I'm going to work off this trimmer line and work down towards the base of the head. So we're going to work with a 0.5 guard to start with. So we're not taking too much off. And if we need to work shorter, then we can always go back in with a zero to soften that outline. Do you want to mind trying to take that away? Most important. Take that part away. Jump back up on your speaker. Take that away. Take that away. Jump back up on your speaker. Okay, is that more comfortable? Yeah, that was this slightly. Again, so corner of the blade. I'm conscious of the outline and the shape, so I'm going to work that way towards the shape. Keeping the short zones parallel to the outer lines. That's the point five you've got. I'm now going to work into the take apart with a one, just to soften again, the contrast in color. Each grade gets darker, the lower grades, your trimmers, your zeros, your point fives, leaves more light behind, and then your thicker grades um, create a darker finish, which leaves more length. And it's important to understand what each grade does, and how much hair it leaves behind, really see then the different shades coming together. So chin back down for me. So this lever is open to start with, so I'm going to be taking less off at first. I'm just playing it safe. I can always close it up then to remove more as I need to as I'm working around. So I'm closing the lever now, take it shorter down towards the point 0.5. And I just need to connect now the trimmer line to the 0 0.5 guard with my zero. And again, working in just with a corner, just nibbling through that line to connect those different lengths together, which creates that fade. And that's when you start to see the contrast in color, where it goes from lighter to darker, rather than being stepped, it's gradually fading. And again, even if you don't feel like the pattern you've created or the, the small area of fade you've created is as effective as you'd like it to look, you're still enhancing your skills. You're still trying out different techniques and methods. You're still learning what different tools can do in different areas. And you're building a platform of knowledge and skill, understanding your tools and products, whether the outcomes, as you want it or not, it's still a positive, you're learning. Just open the lever slightly because I want to maintain darker zone in the fade as I'm working around. So I want to maintain a darker outline for the rest of that pattern. So you've not just got reverse fades one side and just bold outlines the other side. The outlines were just the baseline, just like I did on the nape. Now I'm working zones of fading into those baselines to really make the patterns stand out. I'm just going to polish so the rest of the outline of this shape just to take it down a level just to kind of make the shorter zone stand out. I'm just using the corner and using our tapered angles just going from shorter to longer. And let's now work that fade, working that fade down towards that point. We've done our short the zone, most of it. And with the rest of the work with a one guard. So it's just about making that zone lighter in color. It's not about putting a sharp outline in. We've got the outline we want to work towards. All I want to do is just kind of stretch the graduation of that fade down towards the outline. And I'm just working into the corner of the blade between the pattern zone and the nape zone. OK. 
Okay, so we've just got this section to work with now just to build the fade in, and then we can go back on the trimmer to make those patterns that little bit sharper than towards the end. Okay. You use a few hands down if you can, just the two of us again in the way. Yeah. Get that done for me. Okay, so I'm going to start working the first reverse feed into the body of the hair. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit more into the rest of the pattern. And I'm using a more natural, conventional C scooping motion. This is a one guard now. I can kind of get a bit braver with my movements and really stretch that fade out, just like you would fade in with a one guard. It's exactly the same, but working on different angles into different shapes. I'm opening the lever again because that creates more length, leaving a darker finish on the outline. So let's bring this in. Hopefully, you can see. Contrast on the fade a bit better. See how that's coming together. If you move your head to the side for me. Contrast on the fade to the outline. I will go back in there a bit more than one, just to soften that edge up. But you can see how the rest of that fade there is nice and soft working towards the patterns. I just need to taper the patterns down more now to make them stand out. Okay. Is that comfortable? Okay. Right, so I'm going to fade into that pattern from below that outline throughout the body of the hair and in that direction. I'm going to go back in my 0.5 guard. I'm not taking too much off. If there would be if I went straight in with a zero, using that angled motion, leading with the corner again. It automatically cuts the shape in you want, it automatically creates that dimension of taper from shorter to longer. Just having patience and just trusting the method Pulling it round and watching it come alive. What are we looking like for time, Trevor? I haven't got a watch to hand, apologies. Yeah, we've got about another 20 minutes, maximum. Yeah. That'll be perfect, because once the body's in place, we've got our shapes, our fades, it's about sharpening those edges, really making it stand out, cleaning the clients down, keeping them comfortable. We want to clearly is not comfortable, but that's down to having the wrong sort of chair. But she doesn't mind, she loves the attention. So just again, taper in motion, starting below the line, scooping through it, allowing the hair to go from shorter to longer, really creating that contrast of taper throughout the patterns. It's not just about drawing lines in and thinking, oh yeah, that looks all right. That's very basic. It's about really kind of making them come to life. It's creating that 3D effect. So that is about creating shade in contrast and throughout the outlines of the patterns. No apologies, you can't see my face as much as I'm speaking. I think it's really important that you can see closer on what I'm doing rather than be able to see my mouth as I'm speaking. Because if this 
was any further away, it'd really be hard for you to see the detail unless I brought the camera in. So I'm hoping you can see more clearly there as I'm closer to the camera. You won't see me as much, guys. So I'm just working around, while I've got my 0.5 guard on, I'm just walk, working around into zones that I'm concerned are still darker than I'd like them to be. I'm just pointing the corner of that blade into those zones, just allowing to spread more light into those areas. Okay, so now I want to work with longer sections of hair, so I'm putting the one guard back on. And again, as you know, I've said enough, one being longer creates a darker finish on the hair you cut. So any zones I feel are too long, I'll just point into them with the corner of the one blade, to soften them down, but it still allows enough hair to be left behind that the outline of the pattern is clear. And in fading and reverse fading and kind of creative fading, it's not about how much of the shorter sections that are visible, it's about how much of the stretch in the fade was visible. That's what really makes the colors come to life. Same with fading sometimes. People think fading is all about making sure there's a high levels of skin throughout the head with a sharp fade towards the blend, but that's not what's effective. What's effective is the lower areas of skin with more stretch and contrast and color throughout the guards, building a nice clean development and graduation from shorter to longer with more contrast and color. That's what makeup makes. It's not about how much skin you can kind of fade in. That's, that's not what good fading is. So here I'm keeping my focus on the 0.5 and the zeros into the ones rather than doing too much with the trimmer. Need to swap over to me, please. Okay, so I keep double checking the, the area of the canvas, how it's coming to life, where there's zones that are too dark, where there's zones that are not dark enough, and just see what I can work with, and that's really kind of make this as effective as I possibly can. Now, if you were doing something like this in a competition, you've got to be conscious that you've got a limited time. You know, so you can't just go wild and just try everything out on the day. You've still got to have a goal in mind within reason, and you've got to know what you've done enough, that's enough, and walk away from it. Sometimes this can be quite fun, and you want to go all day, but in different lines and shapes and places. But you've got to know when, once you've got it in place, you can't do any more there, just perfect what you've got rather than trying to add too much to it. Now back onto the zero, I want to start exposing shorter zones now, creating a more light definition throughout the patterns. Then techniques the same. Leading with the corner, keeping that blade angled out, this understanding the hair is left behind with a zero and how it looked when I cut with it. That's what's important, is knowing what I'm leaving behind. So as I've got more room to kind of work that tapered effect, I'm going in with a flatter face and flicking that out. But when we work in areas, we haven't got as much room to kind of work our tapered motion. 
Then we need to just be in control with our corner. Just an sometimes you do a lot of work with clippers and trimmers for designs. The blade gets heated quite quick, dries the blade out, and you hear then when it needs to be lubricated. And it's important to maintain the lubrication, maintain the quality of your tools. I'm opening the lever now. So again, I want to work with longer sections now into the patterns. Building up from the zero that I've just been working with. Creating more of a taper. Starting on the baseline and then flicking through the hair. Getting longer as we're coming away from the head. Point in throughout the faded zones with an open zero just to cut short the levels of hair into those sections, which, if we're fading. You can see a clear line. It's where obviously there's two contrasting guards that create the lighter profile and the darker profile. And in this zone, you get your line. But if you find the guard in between and then work through it in a point in motion, you then break those two areas up and create the fade. So it's that polish of the guard, say, for instance, the 0.5 between the one and the zero. Sometimes just using it in a flat motion, you can't quite get that contrast, that connection, using the corner throughout it, allows more light to be spread into the darker zone from the shorter area, which then creates that blur in the fade. So we'll do that. Now, as I just mentioned, with the corner, just pointing through the hair, you've got to be conscious, you are cutting against the grain. The hair sitting that way, you come in that direction, You'll be creating a line. The hair's going in that direction and you're pointing towards it. You're going to be removing weight but not creating lines. And that can be the tip for fading sometimes. If you're struggling to get lines out, those areas are looking too dark. You need to point into it with a shorter grade to allow more light to sit into that zone. So I can see now. So this is where sometimes you see things come alive. I'll put your head back straight for me. So where I've built that fade towards this point here, and I've built that fade down to that point, I'm going to connect them. I'm going to work them together so they create then a connected fade pointing up on both sides. I've got my 0.5 guard on. I'm going to start working and following the shape of that part of the round to connect this fade. Bring the one guard back into play. Okay. 
I'm still being conscious of the shape of the pattern. So rather than just cutting across square and building it around the pattern and then back up then, following the section of the first part we did. Bringing the point five guard back in. Just to taper it down shorter towards the outline before I bring the zero into play. So now we're working with a zero up towards the shorter zone. So they'll fall in that shape. Again, using that corner, it's a point with an open lever through the shorter zone into the longer zone. See if any lines that starts to create that faded contrast. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back in, I'm going to turn my sharp left the edge in, so I'm going to stand out more. I'm going to put a couple of minor details in, just to add some more character then to this canvas. When we've got a trimmer back into play, I'm just going to shape up around this here. Pulling the hair down towards the hairline. Cut this cleanly and evenly throughout, so using the corner, pulling the hairline round. Just going to taper some of the weight away on this section, which just sits more evenly. But we're going to keep the depth and the darkness in the hair, and not take it too short. Just put it down back there. Clean the canvas down. Okay. Back up to me, please. Now I'm using a bit more of the face. I'm still leading with a corner, but rather than just cutting with that baseline, I'm now cutting with a face more to allow the shorter parts to stand out. And this is where your patience really comes into play. Because if you're doing something like this on a child, which would generally be your biggest clientele for patterns, it's very difficult to get them to sit still. Up towards the bigger zone at the top of the head and bring more of the corner again. I want to stretch a lighter area of the fade into the darker zone. So if you're conscious about putting new lines in, that's why it's important to lead with the corner. If you go in with a flat face, you are very likely. To put a new line in and to remove too much hair, unless you're very skilled with a tapering technique. So if you lean in the corner and you're conscious of pointing it against the grain, it's a lot easier to remove 
more hair without creating lines. But allowing enough light then to show, making that part and stand out to the side. And the same on the side section, leading the corner, just polishing into the shorter zone, allowing more light to show through in the face. Okay. Okay, now do more work with the face to remove more hair. Using the corner creates the shape of the taper, and then using the face, teeth down, removes more length. Allowing a sharper outline. Just going to add this in lines back now. Create a sharp line. Just using a fade brush, remove any shorter bits of hair that's been cut. It could be sitting against the scalp. That's why you make sure it's clean. I can see exactly what I cut and what I need to cut. Again, leading in with the face first, teeth down, yeah, as close as I can to the scalp. I'm not going to go back around with a cutthroat, especially if it's on a child. And I don't tend to use them on ladies because I don't want to kind of irritate the delicate skin. Might not be as kind of coarse as men's scalps, where you can probably get away with using the blade slightly with the right gels and lubrication. So with the tools you've got these days, the trimmers get so close. Is it worth the risk of then going back around with a cutthroat, spending an extra 15, 20 minutes on all these outlines when we're not just trying to get bold outlines, we're trying to get contrasting colours. So it's important to have that graduation from shorter, longer, rather than just clean, bold lines. Then yeah, using the corner, just pointing shorter zones into longer zones, really trying to blur out those fakes. Now, a little finer details, just to add a bit more character to some of the outlines, I'm just going to bring in pointed sections. One more, baby.
I'm going to bring some dots in. So we're going to put dots in the head that really adds character to the outlines. It's literally a case of putting a corner in and working anti-clockwise, moving to the opposite corner, moving clockwise, and you will cut a clean circle in both areas. Head down, please. So we're we'll going to the corner first. Anti-clockwise. Keep a nice small circle. Obviously, the bigger the motion, the bigger the circle. At this point, you cut in the left-hand side of the circle. And now we're going to go back in and work clockwise. Leading with the corner, cutting with the first two teeth at the corner of the blade. Come back around anti-clockwise, just to even it all out. And I'm going to work that throughout the bottom section. Spin down to me. More. Bring your head around more like that. Thank you. The corner in, clock anti-clockwise. And then back in, cutting clockwise. And work that to the top as well, so add some more character. Mm -hmm. The clockwise first, cutting across the hair, anti clockwise, sorry, cutting across the hair, rotating it, turning the blade around, rotating it, circular movements and motions. Okay. Anti-clockwise, reversing the blade, clockwise. What's up, you want now? Using the corner just to sharpen that up. Working it back, and we gradually get smaller. So these circles taper down, following suit in the shape of the hair. The small circular motion, switching the blades around to kind of clean the all around. You see now he's had to add some flare now to the outlines of these patterns. Adding minor details to wealth of faith, wealth of patterns, and this is what brings the character to life. And now rather than taper feed emotions, I'm looking at working sharp, small detail outlines in, detail outlines in. Just to add edge then to these patterns. As I bring the camera in, in a bit, you'll be able to see these more clearly. Right, 
And we're still working to your scalp with the blaze. So I want to get it closer to the scalp. Yeah, so Ah, so you'll find the details coming together. What have you got now? A different contrasting colour. You've got your 3D darker outline that we initially put into place. You've got your zones of fading, building those outlines together, and then clean, small, detailed, sharper outlines that really adds the different contrast to the patterns. I don't. Again, as I got the trimmer in my hands, I'm just working throughout the fade, polishing up any areas I just want to perfect. So, right there, last bit. So as I'm looking at this, I'm just feeling as I'm going around, actually, I want to add a bit to that and stretch this or shorten this. I'm just going to work into it and build that area as I feel the last part of it to then. I've got a question from Josh who's wanting to know how you're staying motivated and keeping yourself educated while you're off. Um, so thanks for the question. So basically, I'm teaching others online um, from my own platform through college and through the BBA. And that's what's keeping me motivated. It could be very easy for me just to get frustrated and kind of fed up with the current situation. But I thought, well, let's make the most of the technology we've got, work with these platforms of Zoom, um, and, and helping give back a bit to people by teaching and helping and kind of building their knowledge around my experience and, and back up. Turn around, please. It's not over yet. Okay. So I'm just going to add a bit more talc to the brush. Again, if you haven't here already, this helps neutralize and absorb any oil or moisture on the scalp or on the hair, dries it out, making it easier to clean the hair down more thoroughly, maintaining comfort for the client, and an all around more professional service. Now, as I bring the camera in closer to show you what I've done, I want you to really focus on the fact that it's not about shorter areas it's about the middle to longer zones that's where the detail and the color really comes together i'm just going to make sure i clean down my sections pin everything back up but i might have just pulled through as i was brushing the client's scalp i'm just going to comb this through back up into the section above with plenty of tension and clip it in and just bring this side and i'm going to bring that camera into play to show you what I've done. I can see through my laptop, the door you've got an idea of what's in place, you can't really see the depth or the detail of it. So I bring in your cam the camera in, you'll be able to see more clearly now what we've achieved. Okay, so I'm just gonna work around. So let me keep your head there for me. You kept this natural and neutral on this side. Okay, worked into a sharp point towards the face to maintain depth and colour in the hair. All right. So as we're working round, not really good. It's not really easy to see kind of the laptop and the camera. Right then. So the closer profile, the different shading techniques as he was in is building a more 3D outline. The smaller details really kind of brings it to life. Those little sharp outlines. 
like middle short in this case, excuse me a second, maybe lead to the hold. I don't know the focus of the picture is like, I hope that's clear. And you can see the detail in the fade in. So we'll bring it back to the side. Head back up, can you please bring up? The side. Okay. We've maintained the depth in the outline, plenty of length in the hair. For a nice flow and shape. On a lot shorter then towards the disconnection, but a lot of contrast in the fade. Uh, the sharper outlines is even closer to the scalp within the fade and the darker zones that just allow it then to come alive. Head down to the side. There's little details in the darker sections of hair. Swirls, the dots, the curls, and the fades then. Just so add something a little bit different to your day to day cuts. So that's all I've got for you today. Um, Fair weather, if you have any more questions before we wrap this up. Thank you, Leona, for your patience. Yeah, no more questions. Thanks, Matt. That was great. All good. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Matthew Guerin. Today we've been educating with a BBA, doing something a bit more creative, a bit more artistic. Have a go, test yourself, try it out, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thank you very much.